Alright, so normally I play rogue games, but I did want to take a look at this game here, Endless Legend. Um, supposedly it's a good game. I'm not sure what type of game it is, so I figured I'd jump inside here and play it. And I wanted to give everybody a view of like how a new player is uh, coming to this game. So I actually haven't played this game before, so let's go ahead and do the introduction. So the graphics in this game I suspect are pretty good because some of the questions was asked me about what kind of uh, resolutions and uh, frames per second. So like I said, I don't know what type of game this is. It may be a strategy game and uh, <clears throat> um, or real-time strategy type game. And that's exactly what it looks like. Welcome to Edge's Endless Legend. This game introduction will guide you through the core elements you need to know to play the game. In order to survive in this dangerous world, you will have to build a mighty empire and face powerful foes. And your tale begins here with your first army. It is looking good location. It is looking for a good location to settle your city. <clears throat> so there's another game that comes along with this one you can buy on Steam right now, on discount, and that's Endless Space. And uh, I'm not sure exactly how that relates to like different types of space games, but. Uh, uh, may be pretty fun. On the bottom left is your army panel. All armies are represented on the map by the strongest unit among those composing the army. <clears throat> your army is currently composed of only of a single unit. The settler, represented by several pawns and hexagon. The settler gives an army the ability to found a city in a neutral region, a region that doesn't already contain a city. So, pretty standard strategy game things here. The army can see the distance of three tiles from its position. You can also zoom in and out for a better overview. Shadow tiles represent areas um, that are not in your field of vision. And the heart is your health of your army. The movement points is right here. And the vision range of the army is right there. Plus one point to move. Driver's most trained tiles, however, like force cost you more. Each region has a fixed frontier and can only contain one single city, which also exploits the region's terrain resource. <coughs> Interesting. Terrain resources are food, industry, science, and dust. To help you decide, you can toggle the display of the terrain resources on and off. Click on the kind of tent. Thing. Look in the bottom right of the end of the turn panel. <clears throat> Interesting. So around me is mostly wheat. Um, good items over here. Good items over here. Uh, probably machinery, right? Steel stocks. And that one is. Oh, so the steel stocks. So I'm not sure what those items are yet. Anyways, for most of the major factions, it's just like the city that gives access to the train resources and on the surrounding exploitation. You found a city and colonize the region, select your army on the colonization on the colonization army action button. Then again on the tile, your army can reach with turn. Looks like initially each city uses one square away from itself. I, I suspect like civilization and other games like that it'll grow out and it'll take more control. But I have to like this area right here. It's got a lot of different things. This one looks interesting back here too. But one thing I've learned from strategy games all these years is you don't want to move too far. But here. And there's my first city.
Congratulations. Now you rule over an entire region. This is your city interface. Your city center plus a six tile surrounding it. The exploitation area will collect every turn and the train resource. <clears throat> the city center as a district district tile automatically modifies its initial train income, providing them more dust and science, but also a bit less food. City tiles also provide a unique resource called influence. The worker panel details all the city resource income scheduled for the next turn. Four trains, four wheels, I don't know what those are, it's like science, production. Okay. For worker resource tiles, potential modifiers, positive or negative, all have an impact on total production you can expect from your city in the next turn. Move a mouse over these elements to see the tooltips for more details. You can move a worker from one column to another and determine which production you want to boost for the next turn. Okay. Interesting. So you actually Wow, you can get very granular here. <clears throat> you know, I'm going to play this game a little bit, but i got to tell you, the space one uh, kind of interests me now more than ever. I do, I don't know, I don't know we'll get to that. Um, we'll play this game a little bit here, and then we'll take a look at the space one, and uh, go from there. Um, I do want to record a rogue game, uh, Tales of Mage Isle. I think that's... Uh, a great game, so look forward to that in the future. But for now, let's go at this. Drag and drop your worker to see the impact on the resource production. Food production cannot be stored. Excess food is automatically used in its turn to produce additional city workers. Okay. Population growth. The green part of the population growth bar shows you're able to get an additional city worker in your next turn. Industry production also cannot be stored in your city. It should be used to construct new city improvements, units, or reg regional expansions. A city, sh city should always have something useful queued for construction. Otherwise, the industry's resources for that turn will disappear one turn later. The list of available construction shows that it can be built in your city. The city improvement, founders, memorials available. City improvements are constructions. Given different kinds of bonuses to your city, they can be built in your city. So, like many interface elements, you can get more details about the Founders Memorial by mousing over it and reading the tooltip in the available construction list. Okay, so hopefully this is a good overview of this game. I think this tutorial is covering a lot of things, but let's go. Oh, here we go. So I just put that inside the queue. So, more green, basically more resources all the way across. So, certainly useful. 60 turns. It's going to take a while to produce I mean, 60, uh, cost 60 industrial units. <clears throat> okay. Your construction at the top of the queue will use your city industrial production for X turns. This looks like maybe four turns? Yeah, four turns. As you can see, a certain amount of tiles will be required to build the founder's memorial as it costs 60 industrial need to develop your science to get an edge over other empires. Science is aggregated at the empire level and used to research new technologies. Again, assuming that we have to have something in, in the queue. In the industry, you must keep researching new technologies. You don't want to waste your science. In the main banner, open the research screen to learn more about research. Click on. So here is the main banner here. So it opens the empire screen to manage simulated minor fractions of our plan. There is a comprehensive list of the cities controlled by your empire. Science and research. Quests. Heroes. Oh, I I do love a game with heroes. It's something uh, I love managing them and uh, creating them to be the best they, they can be. Manage your armies and units. Diplomatic relations. And uh, you discover one of the following technologies to unlock the marketplace. Okay. All right. So here's our research screen. Complicated. Good night.
The research screen is where you research is where you will need help your empire evolve through technology era as you struggle towards a brighter future. One of the first six tech, 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 one of the first six technology eras is currently accessible. Each era is represented by a circle regrouping a number of technologies. In a new era, you must research nine technologies from the previous era. The order in which you research do your research does not matter. The cost in science automatically increases for each new technology research. In addition, researching in a more advanced era also costs more science. So this is interesting. Switch up from civilization. Some technologies directly unlock new powers or bonuses. From others unlock city improvements, expansion units that can be built in your city. Blue sec circle technologies already known. Green ones are unknown. Several technologies can be selected in a row. Will be researched one after another and selected. Food and industry technology are usually a safe way to begin using your science. You, you'll have, you can hover over the mouse over each technology to learn its effects. Once selected, a technology will, be, will take a fixed number of turns of research depending on your science production. Select the technology and research and go back to your city. Okay. So, so the three different areas. So. Economy and population, science and industry, military, and empire expansion. Well, the empire expansion is obviously your system. Not really needed, probably on day one. Search party and language square. The public square dedicated to practicing and teaching the many languages of area conversation with minor factions now move beyond pointing and grunting. <clears throat> okay. Public library. Well, gotta say that when you're researching, being able to research more is certainly a good start. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the library. And then I'm just gonna go through these kind of quickly. I don't want to be making this all the way through, but go to super system. I think it was nine before we get to move to the next era. All right. And then turn, all right, let's see what happens. Population has grown to two. They turn off the notifications. Thanks to your food production, the number of workers has increased. There are now two workers available on the workers panel. Burial streets and expansion construction can now be selected from the list of available construction. Expansions must be directly placed on the map and can be built several times. For most major factions, every two additional city workers makes one new borough available for construction. The borough streets enable you to extend your city exploitation area by building a new city district next to the... You queue the borough streets construction, you click on the construction, and then click exploitation area tiles next to the city. So I click here, adjacent square, and then it'll expand into these areas. Well done. Like any other cube construction, your new city district will be functional once construction is complete. Looks like nine turns. <coughs> so the larger your city is, the more people are unhappy. So, 
you know, I wonder if this is a functional tutorial, like, can we keep playing after it's done? So, I don't need to enter, I have science queued up. So, scouting is a great way to explore the city. Awesome. To create new units, explore you must create, create unit designs. Unit Marine has a, is a unit design list available for construction. Okay. Yeah. So, this is our construction queue. We're pretty much waiting for this queue for the different things here. Once two of them. Several turns to build them. Dust, the most precious resource on Aruga hasn't been introduced yet. It is stored at the Empire level and can be also be exploited by your cities. For each city, improvements already built on cost a small amount of dust for their upkeep. The full upkeep of your city improvements is thumbed up here. Note that you will be able to use the browse button to see the cost details. This can also be used to directly buy out cube construction support to get them built into the next turn. So dust is basically gold. <clears throat> I don't know why they didn't say gold, but click on the buyout button on the two unit designs in cube. 225. I guess I have 2,000. Stock 2,000, roughly. Alright, so by the Marines. Okay. In turn. Turn. Marine built, burrows built. <clears throat> uh, he was empty and found his memorial. Each once a unit is constructed, it's placed in the city garrison. Like other constructions, each unit already consumes a bit of dust for upkeep. <clears throat> Grade out units in the garrison in your city's militia. They cannot leave the garrison unless the city is under attack. Garrison units, including militia, are always the last bastion there in any city against attackers. Our capacity is two. Great new units. Select our great new armies from the garrison. Select two units or click the on the select all button. You click the new army button. <coughs> So it's made an army of the Marines. I can explore new areas. However, they need to limit the number of armies as also they also have an upkeep cost which be each turn. Just like upkeep for each unit. So basically if you move them out, <coughs> um, they cost more money. A rug has many runes to search. One of them any one of them can provide you rewards rewards. So if you find a ship so Find one, you should try your luck. Rune tiles that have perched on the map are shining. It is up to you now to decide when to end your turn. Remember to check out your city construction queues as well as your recent queue and any or end of turns. While exploring with your army, white dots indicates the army's path for this turn, and the yellow ones those for the following turns. You can maintain Right click while mousing over the map to simulate your path. Your army will move once you release the mouse click. For that.
I wonder if I can assign a hot key to them. Alright. That's pretty cool. So, I guess we'll go here. I think I made an error, or I don't know how to do something. How to explore the... Uh, we'll come back to that. Pretty simple thing. Alright. So, let's make sure we have stuff in our construction queue. Get back to our city. Greens. Gross. Mentioned here, you can select these guys to be auto, auto explore. But they can't make it there this turn. All right, let's end the turn. More population. Oh, I should have adjusted the the build out here. Oh, here's the uh, room right here. Just one set. Okay, so inside the city. change the amount of science generated <clears throat> or the amount of food divided up like this in production so I happen to be a big fan of science our city people are pretty happy here okay I am going to go here, up here. There's a, there's a, going to be an enemy city there. Or, <laughs> I definitely like playing war games, so. A city we can talk to people we can interact with, not necessarily enemies. Okay. Um, Sisters of Mercy there. Trade routes. <clears throat> Alright. In the turn. Our Marines are being built here. Search this location, see what we get. Nothing of interest. All right. Ruins give you unexpected rewards or nothing at all. As you play, you'll discover different ways to increase your chances of getting a reward when you search through. Ruins may also give you quests to complete, which provide additional. <clears throat> to explore areas more rapidly, you may be able to split your armies up by selecting one of the several units and right clicking on the map. You can also use the split army action button once the units are selected. In similar ways, you can choose to merge two armies together. Okay. And you can move merge to similar armies together too. So let's go ahead and. Select all.
fleet. I don't score. And then that's how we split them apart. <sighs> there has to be a way to select, but I guess we'll get there. Back to our city. They seem like they're going okay here. Um, So let me let me just look at some of the different things on here, and then we'll probably wrap this video up, and and uh, I might move on to a different game tonight. Um, we to open the game menu, ending the turn there, obviously. Current season, <clears throat> under plan movements. Oh, so here's nice. So this is how you find the armies that don't have orders. Find any or now. So, yeah. Okay. Are we down there? Mm. And the grid's all off and on. So let's see how our science is. We're 85% of the way done researching the current library. Or researching the library. I assume we can change that. It's probably a penalty for doing so. Flat. Maybe we'll say that. So. I have to admit here, I do forget how to create burrows. Um, save game. I don't see it help inside the game on how to. Turn. Library is finished. Next is the lab. That gives us another building to build. So we'll obviously build that. But our heroes. It is time for you to make contact with the native minor factions of Union. Minor factions are hostile. There only there is only one minor faction per region, living in one to three villages. Villages contain units for their defenses, but they may also spawn roaming armies that could attack your army. Use the parlay army action on one of your villages. The village will give you. A Pacification quest. By completing it, all the villages in the region will instantly be pacified and will no longer create hostile army. When sitting next to a village with your army, select it. Right click on the village, select parlay. Uh, so if we simulate, we get benefits too. And here's the options down here. 
drive, auto explore, attack, beep, parlay. Initiate negotiations with the minor faction village. If the builder demands all their villages in the region will be pacified peacefully. <coughs> New quest added, Defender of the Weak. Tribe leader needs your help. A hostile monster has been raiding and threatening their villages and lack of military power to stop them. If you wipe out that threat, the tribe will view you as a savior. We get some die and okay. Let's show the location. So it's back over there. Probably should rejoin our friends or our second thing. Okay, search the room for these two, two units. There's a quest screen, completed none, all current, failed, Hopefully too many of those. A quest marker indicates the specified rooms have to go and to search for the quest. The location will even be visible through the fog of war. Please note that for other quests, the markers will only be visible, visible within the vision range for your army. Complete the Sister of Mercy quest in order to pacify all the villagers. Okay. this turn. But. Like both armies, and we can't. I'll do the search button again. Zoom out button. Zooming out. Efforts are pretty good. Oh, so it's not actually this one. It's this one I really need to go to. Army. Take two turns. Okay. Go back to the city. Building the Marines and uh, they're going to build the public library. I really wish I would have uh, just waited, but there we go. So we'll do the Marine first and the public library. I can probably buy this, but I am spending money. Interesting. So Losing a little bit of money there from military upkeep. You guys far out, but uh, um, doing research there. Obviously, spend more resources. But anyways, okay. Let's end the turn. We should make it there. Public oh, library is going to be built next. We have another marine. Here. there. <clears throat> All right. This is a roaming army. One guy. I have two marine units. Use your global strategy offensive. Go manual on this. You're about to launch into a battle against an army. Here's your encounter panel. Note the battle takes place directly on the train of the adventure map. 
Turn the balance power of the train in the battle game. You prefer to play a simulated battle in auto. The unit movements and attacks are handled by the computer. Assume that the computer, as you always, doesn't do as good of a job as you would do if you're personally driving. So, in, um, I can set it by unit by unit um, if I go manual versus auto. Click on the ready to fight button when you start the battle. It is currently set for manual. So, I think we'll do that. Deployment here. Welcome to the battle room. During the deployment phase, you need to spread out from your army's leader position across tiles shaded with the color of your empire. The opponent's army does the same thing on its tiles. Battleground is delimited by the white borders. All units start by taking their default positions. Your opponent's units' positions are only estimation and likely to change when the battle begins. City battle screen switching. During a battle note, you can always click in and out of the battleground if you wish to manage your cities or give orders to other armies at the same time. Okay. A battle with roaming is about to be done. But look. Here and check out my city. Do that. Pretty cool. Building the, uh, the library there. Look how our science is doing. Going well. Reach some gems. Okay. Let's go back over here and check out the battle again. Here's my army. I don't know if he has a ranged weapon. But all unit information is listed in the units panel class, attributes, capacity, status effects, and level and strategy. Units class, infantry, cavalry, range, flying, or support determine the way they can help move and attack on the battleground. Life is the most important. Is the amount of damage that you can sustain attack determines the ability to put damage, defense, reduce attack odds, initiative helps units strike first in battle. Damage determines the hit score of such attack speed determines the number of tiles they can move per round. Troops can also be impacted by other factions, relative position, attitude, and terrain. Relative position. When next to friendly units, morale is increased, increasing their attack. Defensive troops. Elevation units also increase their attack. Attacking the position of higher position. Terrain. Force tiles increase unit defenses. City tiles increase morale. So, terrain is important aspect of this. So this area here is slightly elevated, so be better to attack from that position, obviously. Capacities are special abilities used by units when attacking or being attacked. The range capacity example gives them maximum distance from where a unit can attack. The mouse over capacities to get more details from the tooltips. Alright. The deployment phase enables you to change your position of the units. So moving around a little bit. So, assuming he doesn't have ranged, I shouldn't have moved in, but we're just going. Alright. So, and also, keeping group together is good for uh, morale and other reasons. Ready? Assign target owners to your units. So, um, you've entered the first targeting phase of battle. You can decide how units perform their actions for the first round of the fight. Each unit will move and attack each round. The initiative bar shows the order in which units will play during the resolution phase. Depending on their initiative attributes, note that if the unit is attacked, it will automatically counterattack using its action prematurely for that round. Select one of your units. For each unit, you can also choose between one of three strategies. Default targeting behavior, aggressive and cautious, but more or less aggressive targeting. The whole position will order unit to stay where it is and attack only with, within its range. 
In addition, you can also manually select a destination or a target. The unit will then try to focus on it during the resolution phase. Note that you can even select a position, right click, and then select a target unit in order to have more control. Select a unit, right click on a tile or enemy that you want to target, and select your default or set a default strategy. Then press launch when you're ready. So strategy here, um, offensive, defensive, hold, huh? covered. Uh, so here's M, capacity, beam. Creep strike back. Creep strike back. All right. Oh. Ready to go, let's see. Oh, so here's our odds. Critical attack, odds of hitting, center defense, and uh, critical de or critical attack defense. Alright, let's see what happens. Sign targeting orders to your units. I, I like targeting. You know, obviously this is a tutorial, so their goal is not to kill you on the first battle. But I assume you're playing the regular game, you set the different difficulties out of so you can make that harder. Down he goes. Victory. All opposing troops have been destroyed. And they got experience by making them veterans. Congratulations, you won your first battle. The troubadours prepare their songs. Whatever the result, the surviving units always earn experience points from the units killed. Earning experience points are equally shared between units. Cross situations can also occur where there, when there are survivors on both sides. In that case, another battle can be launched if the army still has remaining action, action points. Quest completed. I've completed that quest. Now people are friendlier to me. And see if we can search this area again. Ten spices. Alright. Go back to my city over here. The village has been pacified and adds plus one to the city population. The minor faction of this village is assimilated by Empire. Each pacified village offers an incremental bonus. So you can see the, the effect of pacification. Three village workers have joined your city from the three pacified villages in your region. So that is a Huge improvement. So, this is the Empire screen here. You the whole re the whole Empire. You receive some luxury resources as quest rewards. There are di fifteen different kinds of luxury resources to discover. And yeah. Each of them is granting specific bonuses. To Opening status, can you be able to review your progress in that of the empires? The screen also gives you more information about your different kinds of victories you can achieve if you bounced over there. Assimilation. <laughs> you will be assimilated. Alright. 
Assuming a manufacturing, at least one of your villagers must be pacified within the region within your empire. Remember, you recently pacified village region. Four. So, this is a lot like Civilization. I like some of the changes they've made. Like I said, I do want to try out one of the other ones. Can't argue about regeneration each turn. That's always a good thing. So, that regeneration. For now, you don't have enough die luxuries to activate the effects by clicking on the unit booster. A die deposit was recently discovered in your region, making the die luxury extractor available in the process. Our list of possible construction. Crafters allow you to collect luxury resources from your region every turn. These expansion types constructions are built directly on the adventure map. Click on the die extractor construction to queue it, and then click on the deposit pile to place it directly on it. New uh, unit 2. Okay. So, I'm going to be done here in just a few minutes. I want to figure out how to do the die thing and then uh, check out a couple more. So, I can barely tell what the symbol is for the die resource. It's kind of like a, here it looks like kind of like a block. I don't know if they're talking about something in my area here that I can use or something that I can go to somewhere else that I can take over and do. Ah, so it was way outside of my city, up there on top. Well done, note this future resource can also be collected by building extractors using corresponding deposit. Alright. Oh. 
there's titanium right there. These things are going to take a while to build. If you look here at the queue, and listen, but we could buy them if we had the money. And then glass and steel. There you go, built it over there. So this is a useful view too. It shows you things that you can do, ways you can build stuff, and obviously read. Fairly large world. Imagine you a much bigger world than that. So yeah, it's a pretty interesting game. I will um, I do want to check out the space one. This one really has me intrigued because that one's called Endless Space. Endless Legend. So, uh, thanks everyone for watching, and hope you have a wonderful um, day. Thanks very much. Bye. Oh, and then obviously, quick. Thanks everyone.